everybody. Uh, welcome. Today I just want to talk about a quick topic. This won't be a very long video, but we're going to talk about indefinite versus definite integrals. Thus far, integration was this symbol, integral from a to b of f of x dx, right? And we know that it's shorthand for this really long, complicated process. Okay. And we know that ultimately, though, it represents represents the area under a curve. The graphic we always give is something like this. All right. And what comes out of this, of course, is just some area number. All right. And that's going to, of course, be equal to what we write down when we write down the symbol uh, for integration. Okay, so it's a number, and that is, of course, really important. Um, all right, so now, with the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have this new formula. Right, so, of course, this connects. This connects integration. with anti-differentiation. Right, in fact, they are so connected together, um, what we're going to do, though, is actually say, we're actually going to now like them so much that we're going to give anti-differentiation. We need to give this operation its own symbol, All right? Because we know the derivative, the derivative operation gets its own, gets its own symbol. In fact, it gets many, many different symbols that all mean the same thing, All right? So the, again, basically, how do we go back? What's the symbol for going backwards, right? Well, we can do that, all right? So what we can do is actually we're going to define an indefinite interval it's actually going to just be anti it's actually just going to be anti differentiation so we're going to write the integral of little f of x dx is equal to capital F of X. But we'll always write just sort of a, a plus C there because we know that anti-differentiation is not unique. All right, so the first thing to note is there are going to be, there's no limits of integration. And that's how you know. It's indefinite. Okay, and so that's all we have to see, say about that, okay? And we can just give a simple example now. If we have an integral of e to the x dx, we know that's, of course, going to be equal to e to the x plus c. And we also know that d dx of e to the x is going to be e to the x, okay? So now we have these two symbols to represent basically going in the opposite directions, right? So the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx, we know that the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared is going to be tangent inverse of x plus c. Ah, cool. It's nice now we finally got this symbol uh, written down uh, for us that allows us to now codify with an operation, a symbol that represents anti-differentiation. Of course, we can now write all sorts of cool stuff down. Um, we can probably think of many, many other uh, uh, functions. Uh, let's actually do like, let's do two to the x dx. Well, what is that? 
Remember, it's going to be 2 to the x over natural log of 2 plus c. All right, well, why is that this one what it has to be? Well, remember, of course, that, that 2 to the x, if we take its derivative, it's going to be natural log of 2 times 2 to the x, right? Well, um, of course, to go backwards, all we have to do is, of course, we'll have to divide that uh, natural log of 2. So, uh, um, and we can, of course, check that by actually taking the derivative, 2 to the x of natural log of 2. We know that's going to be 2 to the x times natural log of 2 all over natural log of 2. And those will cancel. And we're going to get 2 to the x. Okay. All right, so um, a definite integral then definite integral? Well, of course, that's just going to be the normal integration that we've, we've defined at the very beginning of our discussion of integrals. It's going to be the one that has uh, limits of, uh, of, of um, integration. There's limits of integration present. Okay, so let's just recap and just remember, of course, that a definite integral, this, this, this operation produces a number when the process is successful, at least. Okay, and an indefinite integral, it produces a function. All right. And I think it's really important here to just highlight those two differences because they're actually output of dramatically different objects. Yeah, because of the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that they have such a strong connection that we give them a very sim similar symbol. Okay, I hope that's helpful. It's not a long video, just very definitional here. Uh, and it just allows us some extra notation, some extra clear, uh, uh, um, another set of, another set of uh, symbols and operations we can do that help us do calculus. Thank you very much.